Good morning. My name is Jill Rosen, and I am the business manager at the Center for Online and Continuing Education at Florida Atlantic University. And uh, we're excited to discuss our partnership with both Greenflower and Parallel with you all today. Good morning. My name is Amory Blyden Richards. I'm a project coordinator at the Center for Online and Continuing Education with Florida Atlantic University. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. Good afternoon. My name is Jane Morgan. I'm Director of Innovation and Community Learning at Florida Atlantic University and very happy to be a part of the webinar today. Thank you for joining us. Uh, morning all. My name is Brian Kedzer. I'm the uh, Head of Talent for Parallel. Uh, which, if you're in Florida, is the parent company of what many of you know as Certera Wellness. And I'm Nate Rowe. I'm Managing Director of University Partnerships with Greenflower, and uh, we have partnered with FAU. Uh, so I will be leading us through today. But a couple of different things we're going to talk about. Uh, first, we're going to give you a background on Florida Atlantic and the Center for Online and Continuing Ed. Uh, kind of who they are and why they are adopting uh, cannabis education and moving into this area and why they feel strongly about the importance uh, of education in this area and industry. Uh, then Brian is going to talk through some industry myths, some of those uh, kind of skills gaps and needs that he's seeing uh, as he interacts with new employees and people that are moving into the cannabis industry. And then I'm going to give a presentation on some of the training options that are now available because of the Greenflower FAU partnership. Uh, some great certificate programs, so I'll take you through those kind of start to finish at the end. Uh, we will have time at the end uh, for questions and answer sessions. So uh, we will be uh, handling that. If you could just type those questions in or hold them until the end, uh, we'll be happy to get to them as soon as we, we start that session. So um, before we get started, want to just uh, get a sense of why you're joining us. So I've got a poll here and I'm gonna send it out to everybody. We'd love to know just a little bit more about you. So let us know if you're maybe currently in the cannabis industry or maybe your job includes some cannabis related work uh, or if you're here to learn how to break into that industry uh, or just here to learn in general. And we'll give it just a minute here. Everybody's going quickly, appreciate that. That's great. So we have almost everyone responding. So we have about a quarter of, of the attendees are currently in the cannabis industry. Uh, the biggest number, 45% uh, would like to break into the cannabis industry. Uh, we have about 13% uh, whose career already includes some cannabis related work and uh, about 20% uh, that are here just to, to learn a little bit more about the industry. So thank you for participating in that. I'll share those results real quick so you can see them. And I will go ahead and move us on to our next section. So to start us off, uh, Jane Morgan is going to talk a little bit about the Florida Atlantic University Center for Online and Continuing Education and uh, talk about uh, who they are and their mission and how they're approaching cannabis education. So Jane, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Nate. Just a little bit of background on Florida Atlantic University. We were established in 1961 as the fifth public university in Florida. Today, FAU serves more than 30,000 undergraduate and graduate students across six campuses located across the, along the Southeast Florida coast and is ranked as top public university by US News and World Report. FAU is an energetic and fast growing institution determined to propel itself to the forefront of innovation and scholarship. In recent years, the university has doubled its research expenditures and outpaced its peers in student achievement rates. The university has earned national recognition for student outcomes and is proudly ranked as the most diverse public university in Florida. A little bit about the Center for Online and Continuing Education, or as we refer to it as COSI. Florida Center for Online and Continuing Education hosts a wide variety of academic offerings, including traditional four credit online degree programs, professional development and certificate programs, as well as lifelong learning opportunities, supporting the full cycle of adult learning needs. COSI currently offers nearly 150 certificate programs designed for adult learners looking to gain credentials, enrich their skill set, or prepare for a new career. 
We're proud to be a provider of choice in our community and to meet the needs of the workforce and employers in Southeast Florida and beyond. Next slide, please, Nate. You might wonder why FAU has partnered with Greenflower. We're very happy about our new cannabis education program with Greenflower. Cannabis has become a rapidly growing industry in the state of Florida. And according to a recent South Florida Sun Sentinel article, sales within our state are expected to continue to grow. In order to meet the demands of the industry, the labor force will need the appropriate knowledge base and skill set to qualify for the jobs created by the emerging market. Florida's economy is largely reliant on hospitality and tourism, and that's an area where our workforce has been detrimentally impacted due to the pandemic and necessary restrictions. While bi many businesses have struggled throughout the uncertainties of the COVID-19 operating restrictions, the cannabis industry is classified as an essential service area and has not suffered the same economic disruption. Helping displaced workers transition into new fields through quality training, education, and upskilling is an essential part of what we do. Meeting the needs of our community and helping people become trained and qualified for new careers or higher paying jobs is why we are happy to partner with Greenflower and Parallel. Thank you, Nate. Thank you, Jane. So let's move on here. So, you know, one of the reasons that Greenflower wanted to partner with uh, Florida Atlantic University is because of the industry that we are seeing and the opportunity that we're seeing directly within the state. So there have been uh, almost 10,000 full-time jobs added between 2019 and 2020 in the cannabis industry in Florida alone. Uh, annual sales uh, are expected for 2020 to be around $800 million with uh, just over 300,000 medical patients. Uh, you know, the year-on-year -year job growth, 93%. So you know, a lot of people that are out there uh, that are looking for new positions and need training, skills, understanding about the industry uh, and how to, to break in or how to change their career path. And you know, total projected sales in Florida by 2024 is uh, 1.9 billion. So obviously a lot of opportunity and to talk about some of that opportunity and to talk about the industry specific, uh, specifically, I'm gonna turn it over to Brian and uh, he is the Vice President of Talent Management at Parallel. So Brian, I will let you take it from here. Thanks, Nate. I, uh, I appreciate that. So I'm actually, I'm really excited to, to be on this call today. First of all, when I see that poll that we started with, I get, I get super excited about the number of people who want to try and break into this industry. Uh, I was one of those folks uh, just, just a handful of months ago. Um, and as Nate said, I'm, I'm currently the head of talent for, for Parallel. So we have operations in Florida and Massachusetts and Nevada in Texas and we're kind of we're a rapidly growing company and as the as the head of talent I have a I have a, a couple core responsibilities uh, the, the first is to attract and hire the absolute best folks that we can to come on this crazy journey with us um, and then once once we actually uh, have folks in the organization and they join us then really help develop them to be more than they ever thought they could be so in addition to all the hiring also all of our leadership development, all of our training, both uh, on cannabis and non-cannabis type stuff. Uh, and then also uh, to create an environment where, you know, people really are inspired to get up and come to work every day and make it an engaging experience and, and make it about more than just the product, what we're trying to do as a company. So, um, you know, I, again, I get really excited by the number of people that have energy on the outside to want to join us because we have a lot of energy on the inside to try and to try and help that help, help make the experience as much as it possibly can be for folks uh, once they decide to go on the journey. So uh, that, that's a little bit about me. You know, what, what I really wanted to do at the outset here is just set the, set the record straight on the uh, industry itself. I think there's a lot of misconceptions out there around the cannabis industry and what it is and what it isn't and who's in it and who's not. And so what I just wanted to spend the first few minutes here is trying to get everybody up to speed on three, three core things that we hear or see all the time as people come to talk to us about jobs at the company or partnering with us. And, and the first and foremost is just that, uh, you know, if, if, I, if I use cannabis or if I've used it in the past or if I grow it or if I grew it in the past, then I'm automatically qualified. Uh, to work in the industry. And, 
you know, while, while that may give you a little bit of um, a, a additional just mindset around what it is, um, it perpetuates this misconception that cannabis companies aren't legitimate companies and that you don't really need true skill sets to get in there. And that, that's not the case at all. In fact, you know, the, the, the cannabis industry, because of the growth rate that Nate just talked about before, I mean, it's rapidly becoming very complex, very matrixed. Uh, these are legitimate companies, companies with opportunities in a whole bunch of different areas, like we'll talk about here uh, in a couple minutes. And so we're looking for highly skilled people. We're looking for people that have backgrounds that span all kinds of different areas of business and science and healthcare and other traditionally what you would call kind of corporate functions. And so, you know, again, while you might be familiar with our product because of, you know, personal use in the past, um, that, that in and of itself does not necessarily, you know, separate you from others in terms of, ma of making you a really, really attractive job candidate. So that, that's, that's the first big myth. Uh, the, the second big myth is that uh, when you do join a, a cannabis company that, you know, for, for lack of a more politically correct term, that we're just a bunch of potheads that are trying to run organizations. And that's, again, uh, not the case at all. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with Parallel, uh, you'll know this, but if you're not, uh, if you look across the executive leadership team of Parallel, uh, you have Bo Wrigley running the organization. Bo was the C was the named the CEO of the Wrigley Gum Company at 39 years old. He's a, he's a third generation Wrigley. Uh, our, our chief HR officer comes from Walgreens and, and Coca-Cola. Our chief operating officer comes from Kellogg's. Uh, our chief marketing officer comes from Patron and Bacardi. And, and the teams that they have assembled as well come from just a variety of different industries. And we have just a ton of different experience from different areas. And so there, there's this, there's this, again, this perception out there that it's just a bunch of people who love cannabis getting together and trying to run these companies. And in reality, that's, that's, that's not the case at all. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you my, my own story. Um, you know, I, I've actually, uh, believe it or not, never actually touched cannabis. And here I am in the industry, fully a full advocate for what we sell and, and what we do. And I'm learning uh, by the day, but feel like I'm contributing a lot to the organization because of different skills uh, that I bring. So, um, you know, that, that, that myth that, you know, the environment that you're walking into is, is an environment that might not necessarily be comfortable for you or that might make you feel like you're, you're a bit of an outsider is just, it's, it's not true. There's, there's room for everybody. It's incredibly diverse. It's inclusive. And, uh, and, we, and we're trying to continue to grow it that way uh, because of the opportunity we have to grow it from the ground up. Uh, the, the third big myth, I think, that, that we hear a lot is that the only way to get into a cannabis company is to know how to grow the stuff or to manufacture it and to turn it into oils and tinctures and, and all that stuff. And this is probably the biggest, biggest myth that we try to fight because, um, you know, this, this is a medical industry, especially in the state of Florida where medicinal use is the only use uh, that, that, that's approved. And so, you know, just like healthcare or uh, pharmaceutical companies or retail pharmacy, which is actually where, where I've come from for the last few years, uh, we have jobs that uh, run the gamut, everything from, yes, we have jobs in growing cannabis and in manufacturing it, but we also have jobs in science and, and research and development. We have jobs in uh, HR and IT and marketing, and we have full-blown end-to-end -end operations that present, you know, not only opportunities to break into the company from a, a bunch of different angles, but also once you get into the company, the opportunity to jump from area to area and place to place and really get a ton of growth uh, in all kinds of different, just basic business skills and cannabis specific skills uh, all, in, all in one place. And we're, we're really proud to offer those, offer those opportunities to folks who, uh, who, who choose to join us. So, you know, with that, with that as a background and we think about those, those, those myths that we're trying to overcome, you know, there's a wide variety of skills that we look for when we have people apply for jobs with us. Or we, when we go out to the market and try to recruit for people to come work for us. And it, and it really draws the line right down the middle between a set of what we call functional skills. So that's, that's really deep expertise in, some, in something. And then the other half is the human side of business and, and, and just leadership and people, people management and collaboration skills. So, you know, on, on the functional side, yes, cannabis expertise is incredibly important, which is why we love programs like this, because we can work with Florida Atlantic, we can work with Greenflower, we can help 
get people some of the basics and some of the 201 level stuff in areas like cultivation and manufacturing and, and compliance and legal to our industry uh, early on before you ever step foot into, into an organization like ours. Uh, we also have a very strong retail footprint. We have almost 40 locations across the state of Florida. So very similar to any other retail company, you know, those skills around customer experience and uh, sales and operations and inventory and all that kind of stuff, those, those are very critical to, to us as well because our retail workforce and our production team really make up the bulk of our, of our workforce. Uh, as I said before, compliance and legal are incredibly important, especially in our industry. It's very volatile. It changes from day to day. And so keeping on, keeping on top of you know, what we need to do to, to stay legal, to align with regulators, then also to work with, with local and, and, and the federal government to really make sure that we're building regulations that are in the best interest of patients, uh, of customers, and of our employees is, is really important. And then, of course, like I said before, on the corporate side, you know, human resources, technology, uh, marketing, finance, you name it, any, any function that would normally exist uh, in a big, big organization exists in our organization too, and those skills are really important. Um, the, the other thing that I'd be remiss if I didn't mention is on the leadership side. So, you know, uh, we, we place a really high premium on humans and, and, and people. Uh, not just on the customer side, but from our from our associates as well. And so, you know, we we're, we are constantly looking for people who are agile and flexible and and get fired up by being in an environment that moves at a fast pace and that changes on a dime multiple times throughout the course of any given year. Uh, you know, we're we're looking for people who want to work with other human beings, people who you know enjoy leading people or enjoy being part of collaborative teams of people that have diverse backgrounds and who think differently and so you know the ability to put yourself in somebody else's shoes and work with other people is really important to us and then the last thing is we are a business and we we, we want to drive results and we want to grow and so you know holding yourself accountable uh being being a self-starter and having some determination and some drive and then if you're going to enter into a leadership role how do you do that in a way with other folks how do you hold other people accountable how do you drive results uh, that's all part of being uh being in a in a rapidly growing cannabis company uh, like ours so you know as you start to think about the programs that florida atlantic and greenflower are offering and the skills uh that you're learning just know that those things are invaluable when we start to talk about um, you know, how they show up in a job interview or how they map back to a job posting that you might see uh, online. And then on, on our end, that's, in, that's incredibly valuable because I don't care what company you're in or what industry you're in, uh, one, of, one of the biggest pains in the neck is uh, onboarding and is getting people ramped up into a job so they can actually do that job at a really high level. And so programs like this and the trust that, that we have in Florida Atlantic and Greenflower to build some of these basic skills uh, in folks who choose to participate in these certification programs uh, gives us a lot of confidence that when we hire somebody out of those programs, they're, they're a leg up over folks who haven't necessarily invested that same amount of time and energy in learning some of those basic skills. And what that means for us is that we can invest less time in the basics and right away when you join the organization, invest more time in teaching you some of the nuanced stuff that might be specific to parallel or might be specific to the job that you're in and get into the 301 level stuff and the 401 level stuff uh, and really uh, help, uh, help anyone who comes through the program take their career to a whole other level uh, at a much faster clip than we would if we were starting from square one uh, with folks, for instance, who don't come through a program like this. So, um, you know, that, that, it's the, the, the opportunity is endless, and uh, I'll, make a, I'll make a shameless plug before I uh, turn it back over to Nate, and that's, you know, one of the things that I love about this industry is how modern thinking it is. So um, I won't bore you with all the, all the details, but I'm a, I'm a Fortune 50, Fortune 500 guy by trade. Uh, I spent the last few years at Walgreens before I came to Parallel. I was at Bank of Montreal, which is a massive 50,000 employee uh, financial institution in Canada and the U.S., for a handful of years, I was at all state insurance for a handful of years before that. Um, the cannabis industry has a much more progressive way of thinking about talent. So, you know, when we think about the people that we want to hire, one of our biggest sayings is uh, never let geography be more important than talent. So if we find qualified people, if we find good human beings, driven people, 
uh, we're going to hire that individual and we're going to, we're going to figure out how to make circumstances work because we, we know the value of work-life balance. We know the value of not having to uproot you or uproot your family. Uh, you know, and especially recently over the last handful of months as COVID has kind of reared its ugly head, you know, we've become really adept at running a business in a, in a very virtual way. So, you know, I, we really like to hang our hat on that. And, and we're always trying to find the blend of people who bring really good business skills. They're really strong, creative, dynamic human beings. And then they layer the cannabis knowledge that a program like this offers over the top. And that, that's kind of what we call the, the unicorn candidate, the, the person who can blend all those things and really hit the ground running and do, and do amazing things in an organization like ours where the opportunities are, are endless. So really excited to be a part of this. I, I, I thank Florida Atlantic and Greenflower for giving us the opportunity to, to kind of get on the ground floor of this because uh, the potential here is, is endless. And we would love to create a pipeline of people coming out of a program like this who get access to job opportunities in a company like ours, uh, we, we, can, we, we can hire them, we can get them on board, and we can really leverage all the things that you all are learning in a, in, in a program like this. So super excited and, and looking forward to the Q&A to hear what questions you all have for me. That was great, Brian. Thank you very much for uh, talking through that. So, um, you know, building on the, the skills that Brian was talking about uh, and, and kind of shifting up gears a little bit, I wanted to talk through the or discuss the, the programs that Greenflower and FAU are offering together in partnership. So we work together, uh, develop these programs specifically with a few tracks in mind. Um, just a, a, an industry and operations certificate, uh, one in cannabis, healthcare and medicine, and another in law and policy. So these three areas are you know, three of the primary growth areas within the Florida um, region. And uh, so we developed these certificate programs. They are non-credit certificate programs uh, offered through FAU COSI. Uh, they are three courses in each of the program, uh, eight weeks for each course. So it takes about six months to get through one of the certificates. Uh, our first start is actually happening uh, next week, July 20th, uh, Monday, July 20th. Um, these programs are fully online and asynchronous, although they are instructor led. So the programs are really designed for working adults. Uh, you know, we know you have a busy schedule. You need to be able to uh, log in and interact with your instructor, your classmates, the content, the learning, um, all of that, you know, kind of at your own, uh, at your own schedule. So we've designed the courses to do that. Uh, and uh, we are also running a special, the courses uh, typically are 29.50 for uh, that's for everything that's for all three courses uh, but we are doing a $500 off promotion uh, for July and uh, if you signed up for this webinar before uh, uh, July 8th you'll also be getting a uh, thank you email with another $100 off code so thank you for early registration and, and clicking and joining us today if you if you did that so the programs you know we take a little deeper dive into what they really are you know, Greenflower has been in business, in the business of cannabis education for a number of years, and we've started formalizing that the education and the trainings that we were offering into a higher education structure. So uh, building out three credit equivalency courses. Uh, so these are very much like a college course. You have an instructor, you have uh, classmates, uh, there are lecture materials, there are interactive materials. And all of that, that content and all of those materials are coming from the top experts in the cannabis industry. Just a couple examples up here. You can see Ian Stewart there. Uh, Ian contributed uh, greatly to the law and policy certificate. Um, Ian works at Wilson Iser and uh, he actually started their entire law division, their cannabis law division. Um, Al Foreman, the, the CIO at Tuasara, you know, again, expert in, in private equity and finance. Uh, he's got 20 years of leadership at companies like JP Morgan and Highbridge. Uh, so these, these, uh, uh, instru these instructors and content creators uh, that created these courses are really at the top of their game. Uh, they understand the industry and they understand, like Brian, the skills that are necessary to be successful, uh, whether breaking into the industry or, you know, really just leveling up your career. So the first uh, certificate that we are offering with Florida Atlantic is the Cannabis Industry and Operations. 
And this is really focusing on that industry and operations side of the cannabis business. So uh, you'll start, all, all of our programs start with Cannabis 101. So you get a nice uh, base, uh, base layer of understanding of you know, really the history of cannabis and uh, the industry. And then there are two focus courses that are, uh, you know, apply to each individual certificate. So uh, this program specifically focuses on you know, the evolution and the present state of the cannabis industry, where it was, where it is now, where it's going, um, you know, really looking at legality and risk factors uh, within the cannabis space. And then, you know, looking at the different aspects of either building or operating a cannabis business and how different it is from a traditional business, which, you know, Brian alluded to earlier in the, in the conversation. Uh, all of these programs also uh, allow you to build out a final project and a portfolio uh, with your classmates and your instructor. And these portfolios are designed to give you something concrete when you go into job interviews that can demonstrate the skills that you mastered and learned uh, and give you know, some real, real world experience and, and focus uh, you know, as, you're, as you're interviewing in the, in the industry uh, after graduating from the certificate program. So this is a quick example here. Um, you're actually building a fictitious company throughout the course. So you're going to need to create everything that you need for that company uh, in order for it to be successful. So mission statement, leadership statement, risk analysis report, case studies uh, that you know, are looking at product, customers, all of these different aspects. So you're really going start to finish on how to successfully operate uh, you know, within uh, the cannabis industry. The next uh, certificate that uh, FAU and Greenflower are offering uh, is the Cannabis Healthcare and Medicine Certificate. Uh, and this is really focused on anyone who is interested in the medicinal side or maybe an allied health professional uh, or healthcare provider that wants to better understand uh, or increase their knowledge of, of cannabis's medicinal properties. So it's everything from the basics of cannabis, uh, you know, the history of how it has been used medicinally in the past, uh, what it can help treat, um, how to evaluate different products that are out there uh, and different solutions for patients, how to manage that, uh, that patient care and plan over time, uh, right from you know, the start, uh, from initial use and, and fine tuning. And you know, also looking into not just human, but the animal and pet healthcare track as well. Uh, that is, uh, is covered in the third class in the, in the series to, to better understand how it breaks into that kind of veter veterinary uh, area. So the final portfolio and project with this certificate allows you to essentially build out a, a patient plan, a patient care portfolio. So you'll have your medical leaflet, all of the information and documentation that you need uh, and is required when working with a patient. You'll have, uh, you'll be building your survey and intake form uh, to learn more about the, the person that you're working with. And uh, then also all of your policy statements and understandings uh, there so that when you go to a clinic or you go to a company with this certificate, you'll have that portfolio to demonstrate everything that you learned and how you can put it into real use in, in the real world. And the, the last certificate that we're offering is focusing on law and policy. Uh, Brian alluded to this earlier, uh, you know, the laws around cannabis are changing pretty much daily in the US. Uh, they change frequently. Um, you know, the, this is a really, really important part of the industry and the business and understanding how to navigate it is critical. And there's a lot of jobs out there right now looking for people that have this understanding and can help, uh, can help their company navigate the legal environment just around cannabis and business in general. So uh, this, uh, this is another three course uh, certificate, but you, know, you start with the differences between regulations and federal, state, county, uh, really the history and how those laws uh, came in to be. Uh, you can identify how different state licensings, uh, licensing programs work, local permits that are needed, um, you know, often overlook things like running a compliant and, uh, and successful business within the cannabis industry. Uh, and for a final project and portfolio, you're actually going to be building out uh, a law and policy case study, uh, along with a public service announcement, an infographic, and a, a policy statement, uh, general policy statement, so that when you are you know, looking for a job, again, after completing the certificate, 
uh, you can demonstrate real life understanding of you know, what's needed in this industry to be successful and how to navigate the law and policy side of that. So when you complete your certificate program, you've got three things. Uh, first is a, a credential from an accredited university. So you have the FAU uh, Cannabis Program Certificate. Uh, you have the portfolio of work to demonstrate everything that you've learned as you go into the job markets. And uh, additionally, you know, you have assistance from FAU Green and Greenflower and uh, several of our partner companies uh, for career focus. So you are getting early notification to jobs and uh, availability openings, things like that. Uh, and like Brian said earlier, you know, these companies have partnered with Greenflower and with uh, FAU to you know, really get a sense of, of who is graduating, how can they connect with them, and uh, you know, and talk to them about entering the uh, the cannabis industry. So, uh, really, it's about exposure to these companies. Uh, you know, getting your your resume noticed and having the credential uh, that you need to to break in or or start building that career. So, how to register? Uh, it's very simple. You can go to fau.cannabisstudiesonline.com. Uh, again, there's five hundred dollars off if you want to join our first introductory class or certificate cohort, which starts on July 20th. We're really excited, already have a number of students uh, in that program. Uh, you can also get more information here and you can also schedule some time to speak with us. So if you wanna to talk to someone, if you have specific questions about one or more of the certificates, or you wanna talk about you know, your career goals and, and how these might be able to help you, we're happy to do that. We'll get on the phone with you or you can live chat with us. It's real people uh, who work at Greenflower and FAU that are talking with you. So um, this isn't uh, just a chat bot or something. So schedule some time with us, grab 15 minutes and we would be uh, more than happy to speak with you about all of those different things. So again, that's fau.cannabisstudiesonline.com. I'll share out uh, a link with that after the webinar as well. So with that, I want to open up the floor for some questions. So I'm going to turn on our Q&A here. Um, so before we get started on questions, I actually had a great question that came in uh, from one of our attendees, Megan, uh, uh, earlier today before we got started. And uh, Brian, I'm going to toss this one over to you because I think it's a, a really unique question and uh, something that's somewhat nuanced as far as navigating it when you're trying to uh, interview and interact with cannabis companies. So uh, is it beneficial or detrimental to talk about uh, experience with cannabis that dates back pre or before it, be, it was legal um, in uh, your area? So if you're in a job interview and you're talking about it and you have some experience maybe before the, the legality side uh, shifted, uh, do you have any advice for Megan on uh, on that? That's yeah, I, yeah. I don't I don't see it as a detriment. Um, I, I would say it also depends on the kind of job that you're applying for, right? If the if the job, like I was saying before, requires you know expertise in growing or manufacturing or production, uh, you know we don't we. We don't, we don't time box it and say, well, the experience you got before it was officially legal is less valuable than the experience you might have gotten after it became legal, right? The experience is the experience. And we're talking to you as an individual and trying to figure out, you know, how, where you can best fit and where you can best add a lot of value. And so all the experience that you have puts you in better position to help add value to whatever the company is trying to do. So I, I wouldn't call it a detriment at all, especially in those jobs where that level of knowledge um, that level of knowledge is critical to being successful in the role. Great. Thank you, Brian. Uh, we've got one more question for you here, Brian, uh, as well. Uh, it says, with the recent Florida Supreme Court ruling um, against uh, the vertical integration uh, model, uh, will that impact parallel um, and, and hiring strategies as the state will go more horizontal? Um, you know, hard, hard to say right now. Um, this, this is what kind of what Nate was talking about. I mean, literally, there's a new regulation or ruling or pivot in the industry uh, daily, weekly. And so, you know, we, we find ourselves in this pattern where we're trying less to react and respond in the moment and think more strategically about 
how how the industry itself is going to evolve and make sure that we as a company are stable enough and have the agility to pivot whatever direction we have to right so um, if for whatever reason you know we start getting more pressure around stuff like that and we do have to figure out a new operating model then we'll go to the we'll go to the drawing board and and, and take a look at that um, or if we go into a, to a, to a new state or a new market and we need to look at how we're going to stand up our our end-to-end -end operations there we have to be a little bit more focused on partnerships right and 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 finding uh, other other companies or other vendors who can provide some of the services that we typically set up in-house in a new market right I think you know for us it's about just making sure that we have the capability to do either or um, and I think it's, it's going to take a little bit of time after after any ruling to really see how that domino affects through the industry and then you know we'll, we'll respond in kind that, that's why it's you know when I was talking about that, those leadership skills before that agility and flexibility I can't overstate Are there any additional questions? Sorry about that. I had some kind of uh, technical issue and uh, Zoom restarted. Let me go back into the Q&A here. Okay. Um, one question was uh, from one student, uh, in the medical program, what level of detail is covered in pharmaceutical science and conducting clinical trials? Uh, great question. Uh, so there's a unit uh, in that course on uh, pharma, pharmacokinetics and also pharmacodynamics. Um, so there are also specific uh, areas in the units that are focused on case studies around other clinical trials and things like that. So um, yeah, so there it's there's not a level of detail that you might find in a year-long program, but it does cover a nice uh, a nice range. Again. You can also, um, if you go to the site, uh, the uh, uh, fau.cannabisstudiesonline.com, you, um, uh, you can read more about each of those individual programs as well. And uh, met, uh, there's a question here as well for Brian, uh, uh, wondering if Parallel drug tests its employees for THC. Well, it depends on the it depends on the market you're in. I think. I mean, some of the some of the time, the regulation is out of our control. We have to drug test, right? So we do we do submit to a drug test. Um, now I can take talk my own personal experience because I'm based out of Illinois, right? So when I at the time when I took my drug test, I was screened for THC. Um, I can I don't know if we're doing a follow up after this. I'll have to double check on what the specific what our specific regulation is down in Florida. Um, but I do know we submit folks to a drug test. Also, to follow up on what we're actually, what the report out says, and what the screen comes back for specific things that we're looking for. We have another question here uh, that I will take. That's asking, how does this differentiate from classes I've taken and am taking at Greenflower now? Definitely an excellent question. Um, so these courses were designed to be essentially three credit hour equivalent. So um, the the Greenflower courses are great programs. Uh, the FAU is just it's different. So it's designed to be a more traditional online classroom setting. Uh, so they might be a little bit more, um, uh, you know, time consuming than you might be used to. They're kind of like a standard three credit hour, hour course. I would expect to, to, you know, look at maybe five to 12 hours a week, depending on, on the unit that you're working on. But they do also offer, um, you know, the, uh, the portfolio piece, as well as the opportunity for real hands-on uh, elements and learning uh, with each of those, um, with each of those pieces. So they are different in that they're offered, you know, through an institution uh, in a more traditional online course format with an instructor uh, and with your classmates. And, uh, and um, you, the, um, Sorry, the a lot of the Greenflower courses are you know more independent study and uh, not instructor led um, uh, on that side. So, 
Hopefully that helps answer your question. I don't see um, any more. Um, oh, actually, there's one more on here that's a good question. Uh, do any of your courses cover past or current racism in the industry and how to shift that for the better in the future? Uh, the Cannabis 101 course, which is a part of all of our certificate programs, uh, actually covers how a lot of the cannabis laws came into place and uh, the motivations behind that, which is exactly what your question is describing. So uh, it is, it does talk about, you know, responsible policy in the future uh, and law, the law and policy certificate itself also has uh, an entire unit on social equity and in, and the industry. So very good question for that. Uh, okay, there's one here um, from, there's a really good question for Brian. Uh, you place a large emphasis on leadership skills and traits. How can one uh, with not a lot of work experience, uh, but a desire to get in the cannabis industry, show these leadership characteristics to help stand out on resumes and applications? It's a great question. Yeah, I think, I think it starts with just um, your human being <laughs> nature, right? So you know, being able to go in an interview and carry yourself with a certain level of confidence and, you know, be able to demonstrate that things that you've done in the past have forced you to think strategically or to solve for specific problems or to work with others in a, in a collaborative environment. That, that, that's a really good start. Um, the other thing that, I, that I'm proud of is, you know, entering the organization in a non-leadership role is a great way to start. And then we have programs in place within our organization to, to grow those leadership skills. So, you know, one of the things that, that we really try to focus on with all of our associates is, you know, we want people to come into the organization and then through experience, through learning, through the, the people they get to network with, we want them to grow to become more than they ever thought they could be before they, they join the, the organization. So just know that there's not a, there's not a pressure uh, on you as an applicant for a job with the organization to have it all figured out or to be able to tick all the boxes or be perfect in all those things that I talked about before. Um, I think, you know, just bringing whatever you do have to the table and try, not trying to be something that you're not, being honest and authentic and forthright, and then talking about your, your desire to learn and your willingness to really sink yourself into growing and becoming a, an even more well-rounded uh, associate is, is the big white flag for us. Like that, that would really, that, that's, a, that's, a great, that's a great feeling to walk away from an interview with that we're able to say, hey, this person's done X, Y, and Z. They haven't gotten all the way there yet, but they, they really demonstrate a desire to learn and they really demonstrate an ability to you know articulate themselves and they've worked a lot with their people and so that that gives us the chance to say let's get that person in here and let's put them through our leadership essentials program let's identify them as a high potential leader and put them into our accelerated leadership development program and let's help them grow those skills they might not have had the opportunity to grow through experience at other other stages in their career great and we've got uh one more and it's it's interesting so um, what would you recommend for someone uh, like myself who has been an investor in the space and assisted in selling uh, other businesses to larger companies within the space and looking for more uh, to be more credentialed within the industry for business development and finance? It's a great question. Um, you know, the business or the uh, industry and operations course or pro certificate program rather uh, would probably be the best fit for that. Um, also, law and policy might be a good fit uh, for really understanding the, the, the back end of that. Um, you know, one thing that you can do if you have a specific question around that is uh, just let us know on the, on the website. There's a live chat and we can share with you uh, the units within each of the course so you can kind of, you know, talk through what might be, uh, what you might be, want to learn more uh, over another. So kind of making a decision that way. All right, so any other questions, feel free to type them in. We have answered everything else though. And all right, so uh, we'll go once, twice, and well, thank you all very much for joining us today. Uh, and uh, thank you to the FAU team. Thank you to Brian for 
uh, you know, spending time to speak with people who are interested in, uh, in uh, you know, actually breaking into the industry or making a career change. Um, so thank you all very much for attending. Uh, this webinar was recorded, so we'll be sending out a link to everyone to take a look at it. We'll put it up on YouTube so you can rewatch it if there were parts that you liked or something you didn't catch. Uh, and uh, please visit fau.cannabisstudiesonline.com. Learn more about the programs. Uh, sign up if it sounds interesting. We would love to have uh, all of you in, uh, in a future cohort and, uh, and learning together as we uh, try to expand the education that's, that's desperately needed within the industry. So thank you all. Everyone have a great weekend.